Okay, yeah. anyway, okay, so uh, welcome to Talk to Trev. I have Chaos Doctrine in the house. I've got, so far right now, I've got Daniel and I've got Alec. How's it going, guys? Right on. Good, Good to hear from you, Trev. And we, today we're going to talk about your new single, Father Gregory, which uh, is coming out the 17th of July, six days' time. Um, guys, what is the fascination with Father Gregory? Get that one to Daniel. I'll take, I'll take this one because I... Dude, I just, when I was a kid, I was like one of those history nerds and I just read fucking everything and I did history in high school and we learned all about the Russian Revolution and the Tsar and, and, uh, and Rasputin and Rasputin is just, he's one of those legends in time where there's just no one like him. He was pure fucking evil and pure good, all meshed in one, kind of like, like the Chaos Doctrine name and since since then, I mean, I was in a band the first time when I was 16. I've always wanted to write a song about the dude. And we finally got around to it. And when, when Alec crunched up those roofs, I was like, dudes, it's time. I'm going to do this. We're going to do it this way. And it just worked so well. So I think the, the theme of his life and the lyrics about his life and how it hangs with the heaviness of the roofs and the, the like kind of creepiness of the keys i think it just made a lack of theme you know yeah if you that, watch the video that, that i was just, just gonna say that, that just that that intro just alone that, that's what is it about a minute and a half two minutes just about and it's it's so fucking daunting and and the visuals that go yeah. with it are i mean like you were just about to say before i really interrupted you because i'm a tourist but that is just a, a fucking beautiful imagery as well and, and it's it scares me looking at rasputin you just you can see the madness in his eyes i don't know if it was madness or just he just did whatever the fuck he wanted to do dude so like you know it's cool well he was given the power dude. <laughs> well, so that he was, was given the power and then they took and, it yeah. back you know so yeah I think you'd be pissed off too. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think it's a case of people not actually understanding what he was about, really, in those times. Mm. You know, I guess it was so easy to yeah. point the finger and say witch or evil or whatever, you know? And they certainly didn't have the, the knowledge that we have today. <laughs> if you go read up on some of, just some of his classic quotes, like, the soul belongs to God, but the flesh belongs to us, you know? He believed that you have to sin before you can repent. God doesn't care about little stupid sins. You have to sin properly. And he was all about that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. look at the, look at A few metal vocalists have pulled that look off. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's where it came from. He's just, to me, embodies everything that death metal and black metal and thrash metal wants to be, you know? So what, what do you call Chaos bad. Doctrine then? Is, what genre is it? I think we're everything metal, dude. We, we write so many songs and we'll talk about that later, but um, we, we term ourselves kind of old school, but there's, there's that industrial theme, obviously, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put us in as an industrial band because we're not full on electro. So we've got industrial in our music, but first and foremost, it's very kind of old school metal from the school of like Slayer, Sepultura, um, you know, Pantera is a huge influence on us. And then the, the industrial vibes of like White Zombie and Ministry and that kind of industrial, more like, yeah, I, I think industrial metal is a little bit narrower because we write, we write our songs first 99% of the time and then we overlay the industrial. So we're a metal band first and foremost. And if you listen to our Slayer cover and if you listen to, um, on our EP, we did a mix of our song Incubator without any loops and samples. We, we write metal first. So yeah very heavy metal yeah i was actually just listening to um god what is the album i was just listening to now uh the chaos doctrine album uh the uh, dia de las muertas mortos that yeah. one the uh, track number two that's fucking heavy and and as soon as i heard that i was like okay that's going straight into my metal playlist that's fucking lovely i love that and then i started listening to my demise oh. that's like 10 minutes long that's an opus man what the hell yeah, yeah there's one in yeah, no, no. I mean, uh, what's it? Uh, my demise um, being two parts. Uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can hear. There's, there's a slightly different influence on that track as opposed to some of the others. Uh, j primarily just because of who wrote uh, the, the tracks. But yeah, Dia is just full on, full on metal. And I think uh, and and um, my demise uh, very similar. Yeah, just, just maybe. Uh, updated slightly you know when i listen to metal i'm like the the guitar the riff and the drums are the two things that that have have to catch me to for me to like it and i have to say 
Father Gregory, that riff, Alec, is something else. Yeah. How, did that, how did that come about? Man, um, I think it might, there, there, there's generally two scenarios with me. Like, like for instance, today I, I, I'm, I'm at home and I'm, I'm writing uh, some new music uh, for Chaos Doctrine. But uh, the other scenario is uh, I'll actually get pissed off with myself at, at, at band practice. So, you know, when I can't come up with something. And uh, I think uh, Father Gregory might actually have been a little bit of that, where I was, I, you know, I sort of had an idea, but I didn't know how to get it out. And I was getting very angry with myself. And slowly it, it built up and, and I got it out. And and that's actually, you know, how the, how the song developed. Yeah. I, I know I keep repeating myself when I speak to bands and artists and so on. It's like, how do you keep coming up with the riffs? I mean, is there, a, is there a process? Is it a chemistry? Is it, a, is it something that what you're surrounded by, you're influenced by things that are happening or shit? Sure. Um, if I take that one you know, or half of that question, um, yeah, I think um, outside influences play obviously play a part, but not quite as much as I thought they would. Um, you know, if I'm like, like now, if, if I'm while I'm writing a, a track, I, I'll come up with, you know, just something that, you know, works. But when, when I say it works, I'm already on um, guitar part number 82. So I've, I've erased or, you know, removed, you know, or pushed out 80 odd pieces before I got to pieces that I like. You know, so it really, it takes, it takes time. And, you know, you, you got to have sort of a, a basic idea sort of in your head of where you're wanting to go with the track. Um, I don't know, Daniel, maybe you've got something else you could add there. Yeah, I think, yeah, Alec and I have been sort of jamming together for seven years now, and we've sort of developed a style of working together. So I, I really write music in terms of riffs and stuff. Um, my influence is more, um, I do a lot of, or most of the industrial and the looping and stuff, but I dig arranging songs. So Alec often comes up with concepts and then we sit down and we, you know, sometimes it's all easy and groove, like sort of, yeah, this goes with that. And sometimes we approach a song very intellectually, almost saying, you know, what would be cool with this? That's really heavy and really fast. Let's pull it down, groove it here, pull it back up, go really slow. So. You know, it really depends what you want to do. So mm. our first album was uh, a combination of songs we had written over time. Our second album, we approached much more intellectually. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the right, for example, when you hear it is, is way bluesy because I've always wanted to do something like an evil bluesy sludge death metal vibe, you know, whereas Grigori is almost sort of a pinnacle of the thrashy kind of stuff that, that we like to do. So. It really depends, you know, but inspiration, yeah, inspiration, art is funny, dude, art, inspiration happens when it happens. And Alec will tell you too, some days you can sit around and produce fuck all, or you at least come up with a concept that you need to refine 20 times. And yeah. on other days you just turn shit out, you know, so yeah, that's art. If there was a magic formula for it, I guess we'd all be artists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, be, this is true. We'd be pop, yeah, yeah. we'd be pop. Yeah. You, you'd be you'd be rich artists. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> so it's coming out the seventeenth. Is it like uh, what? Like, uh, do you get emotionally attached to it? You know, it's saying, "Oh, here it comes." It's you know, we've taken so long to write this fucking song. It's fucking happening. Eighty odd riffs down the line. Father Gregory's coming. This is it. It's fucking here. You know, is there anticipation, excitement? Um, from my side, uh, you know, being in, in music for the last 30 years, I still get goosebumps when, you know, when I write something decent or, where, you know, when it is, you know, recorded and, and mixed well and, and all that stuff. And, and it actually sounds good and, and I want people to hear it, you know, I mean, uh, that, so, yeah, definitely anticipation that, that people will dig it uh, for sure. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm good with that track. I like that track, you know, if other people don't like it, you know, you can't please everyone, but I certainly dig it. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm, I'm very proud to put it out. You know? Well, it's the first Chaos Doctrine track that I've actually heard. And uh, what a fucking, you know, first track to look to hear. And the video was done by Phil. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Phil and I will say a of a collaboration. Sometimes I have ideas. You know when uh, sort of like uh, 
when you have uh, an orchestrator and I go, you know what, could work cool for this, Phil, if we do one, two, and three. But he makes it happen and he, he like, he, he puts edges and spins on it. He's one of those dark, mysterious individuals that just right. comes up with the weirdest shit. Okay, and it works. So, it yeah, obviously so, lends itself really well. Exactly. And I mean, Phil and Alec and I have been working together now for like seven years and especially the last year since... The, the other two guys left the band. The three of us stayed a shitload of time together. So we've really, you know, learned to to understand one another quite well and complement one another quite well. But on Father Gregory, just quickly, since you're talking about the intro, on the album, we've actually written a separate intro for Father Gregory. So it has an intro track called Nocturna Mors, which means night death, mm. um, which is based on sort of a Russian nursery rhyme which then leads into that. So we're just adding another one and a half minutes of fucking creepy <laughs> shit in front of it. Just just to make Isn't you shit yourself a little bit more. Fantastic. That's all we need. Some more dark foreboding shit in our lives. As if load shedding wasn't bad enough. Now comes Father Gregory. Fucking hell. Okay, so that's coming out the 17th of July. Okay, cool. And, and Alec, you were saying um, about mixing and everything like that, but... Oh, it's all done by you at, at Gemini AD Studios. Yeah, that's correct. Um, uh, is that you your know, studio? We, it's our studio. It's actually uh, yeah, da on Daniel's property. Um, last year, he asked me to, be, uh, uh, because I'm an acoustic consultant and, and in the contracting game, um, he asked me, uh, you know, to, to get something, a design going uh, on, a, on a piece of land he had there at his place. And um, so we put it, to, put it together, built the studio, and um, yeah, I've been working out of there as much as possible between there and my, my little room in, at home, you know, yeah, in the week. But there, that, that is fucking genius. That's where the magic happens. That, that, sorry? That's fucking genius. I mean, you don't have to rely on to anybody be. else, you know, you can, you can now do what you want to do, you know. Obviously, there's costs involved, you know, to a certain degree, yeah. but not as much as it yeah. would be if you had to go outsource it to somewhere else. Look, I'll be dead honest. I, I, like I said, I've been in this for 30 years already. Um, you know, playing music, being in bands, be, playing international shows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The one thing that has always let me down, or maybe you know, been a real hindsight issue for me, is going to a studio, racing through it and not getting what I want mm. at the end of the day. And um, I know, and, and, and maybe maybe it's different internationally, but here in South Africa, you know, obviously, you know, the, the musicians don't have money. I mean, you know, let's be honest. And, um, you know, so when we go to the studio, we, we think we're prepared, but we're, and we're, we're, we're live prepared. We're not studio prepared. And, I think, you know, that's the difference when it came to, to putting this album together was I wanted to do it my way, you know, mm. our way, you know, the Chaos Doctrine way so that it really, you know, we had time to work on the loops. We had time to, to do that within us, within our own space and be comfortable with it, not race into a studio. We've got nine hours, boom, try and get it done, mix it, you know, finish you can't concentrate for, for that amount of time and do everything that you want to do and yeah. so um, you know in the time obviously over the years I've, I've, I've done a couple of records and um, this one was really the one where I thought okay you know guys give me the give me the opportunity let me see if I can impress you um, and it's it's working uh, in, in my opinion I think it, it, it's, it's going well I think well, the guys it, it are sounds it. fucking yeah. phenomenal. I mean, they mix and master, master it by yourself uh, um, at yeah. Gemini AD Studios. I mean, it's beautifully done. It sounds fucking legit. Thanks. So, I mean, yeah. a great fucking job. And it's also, I mean, it, it lends to, to the creative spark, do you think? You know, um, having your mm. own studio, having your own time on your own hands to do things, like you're saying, sure. doing it right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we, we are all working you know, class people, you know, we all sit there, we've got our day jobs and that, but given that we can go to a room and everything is there for us, you know, to, to, to get things done, to, to, to not have to stress about setting up, setting down, you know, trying to come up with stuff. It, it, like you, you, once you start eliminating things from your life that can, that, that, that take away from the, the, the creative juices, things start to happen. Mm. And I believe that that space is what that is you know for us is is that is those the pictures that we see on facebook of the the sort of like the high roof 
or the high ceiling could, uh, yes, area. Yes, that yeah, could, Fuck, that looks awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's legit. Yeah. That is seriously legit. Very cool, man. Well, I, thanks I, all to, 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 to Daniel for the space and, and for believing in me to do it. You know, I think Daniel's, I think Daniel's crafty because I think what happened, <laughs> what's going to happen yeah, is one day, <laughs> one day when there's no more chaos doctrine, which I hope that doesn't ever come around, he's going to have a fucking studio and Alec, you're going to have fuck all. <laughs> Well, it is madness. It is, there man. is madness behind his thinking. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, why do they call you Doctor D, Daniel? Daniel, as you fall asleep. Oh uh, no! I uh, sorry, I was on mute because <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> He's trying to have a fucking conversation. He's put himself on mute. That's the way to run a studio, <laughs> right no, there. When the vocals come in, just chuck it on mute. <laughs> Oh, I was saying it's a pretty boring story. I have a I have a PhD, which makes me a doctor, and my name's Daniel, so that's a D. So Dr. D is just short for Dr. Daniel Berger. And moving um, swiftly along so then. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting some horrific story or something, a Dr. Doom or something. Uh, actually, yeah, well, the D can go for a lot of words, you know? There's <laughs> decrepit, there's de- <laughs> Oh, really my God. D for doers. Also, Alec... I will tell you, I'm I'm not always easy to work with. I'm one of those taskmasters, dude. Like, there, there's no time for fucking fun. This is we we drink afterward. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what you record an album without drinking? No, come on, man. That's not the weird way to be creative. <laughs> you drink. You no, know, alcohol doesn't make you creative. Alcohol makes your hands and your throat slow. Right. So. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You know it does. Yeah, it slows you down. But how, how did you get into yeah. the, the whole vocal side? Um, to be honest, in 1995, I was in a band and we had a vocalist and then he left. And the Oaks were like, well, you've been doing backing vocal. Why don't you just do vocal? And I could shout out louder than, you know, the 40 watt Marshall amp that we had at that time. <laughs> so honestly, it was sort of a random thing. And over time, I mean, I started taking it a lot more seriously. And I started, I did opera coaching for two years, a long, long time ago. And um you know, now I've just learned over time kind of the preparation and keeping your voice alive and awake and stuff. But um, I dig it, dude. It's really, for me, it's a sort of an expression of me. Yeah, it's also, I mean, it's awesome to be a vocalist in front of these guys who are really brilliant musos and write really great songs, you know. I'm not your typical vocalist who pitches up and then writes lyrics at the end. I'm involved the whole time. And I really, I really dig working with these guys because I think our heads are really in the same space. But not in the same space that you know, all three of us want exactly the same thing, which is cool. So Alec comes up with with a completely different type of riff that I would, but it still ends up being Chaos Doctrine, which which to me is really what keeps every song fresh. It's Chaos Doctrine, but it's fresh. You know, it's not like yeah. every song sounds exactly like the previous one. It's clearly us, but it's different. It is very different, I have to say. I mean, I've spoken to a fair few bands and it, it was almost uh, like a metalcore podcast <laughs> and which is which is fine because it's, it's a new genre for me but i'm more straight laced uh, metal and i was like okay cast doctrine how come i've never heard of you guys okay and listen to father gregory with diva ask me to give it a, a, a review which will be out in the same time we do the podcast and i was like fucking hell this is what i'm talking about this is the ship that you know like you were saying earlier daniel it's you guys are a metal band first and foremost and then the keys coming afterwards <laughs> i actually thought i was on youtube man stuff on mute it was weird there's exceptions there's probably right now right now as we stand there's two songs where we did the industrial first and the metal later the one will be on our album it's called Christchurch Horizon and the other one is called 86 and that's for our third album so most of our songs like I said 99% of the time we write the metal first right so every now and then I like to exp- like on our on our EP um, called The Chaos Chronicles we put that out last year I took our song FTG and I spent like three days, I broke it up and made it like a techno remix. You know how uh, Rob Zombie and Al Jurgensen do that mm. often, they take their own music and they remix it. So I did that. So if you can listen to the original, it's like pure nasty old school thrash metal. And then the new, what I did is I again overlaid some creepy loops and shit and just turned it into a complete industrial fucking abortion. So it's very different. You should go check it out. It's I, very, I, it's very I, I will like I've, if the factory and, my, my and iTunes, angry. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to ask now. Um, okay, so Father Gregory coming out the seventeenth of July, 
And then we've got, um, when is, you've got another single coming out after that and then the album? Um, yes, so what, what we're going to do, we've got Father Gregory coming out, then we've got another cover that we've been playing around with. That's going to be something completely different, so you and I can always talk about it closer to the time. And then we've got another cover. Ah, oh, sorry, three, uh, another new So three singles in total are going to be released? Um, well, sort of. We're actually just playing around. So the first single is Father Gregory. Then we're just going to chuck out another cover because we did the Slayer one the other day. We wanted to do another one. So we're going to chuck that out, but that won't be on the album. And then comes our second single. And the second single is very different to Father Grigori. It's faster, um, a little bit more old school, but what makes it super rad is we've got a badass international collab collaboration on it. Seriously old school, um, let's say from, from a, a very heavy metal country. Um, we don't want to give away too much because, I mean, we don't want to steal from Father Grigori oh, now. But when that track come comes on out, now, come on now, <laughs> come on. You got the juices flowing, Dr. D, come on. I tell you, they're in the same time zone as us some of the time. Oh, that, that, that fucking helps. <laughs> Jesus, I, I'm so glad Rory's not in this meeting, I can tell you that much. I wouldn't get a word in with, between the two of you. Bloody hell. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so come gotta, on. Who is it? Okay, now we'll wait, we'll wait. So when, when is that uh, with, with the... But this dude is doing vocals with me and it's fucking amazing. I think we're planning for about, I don't know, about two months from now. And we oh, also okay. want to time carefully here because we don't want to throw all our stuff out. We really like to see where this whole gig thing is going, you know. Mm. I'd hate to release my album, um, or our, sorry, our album without... That's a real fan attitude that day. Eh? Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought us to start a whole new fucking album that Alec and Phil and I spent so much time on, and then we don't even get to play a show. So we are we are kind of trying to play this strategically, but at the same time we're also having fun. So why rush it, you know? So okay, so album is it going to be released this year or early next year? Uh, we haven't really decided, but I'm. I'm but it is going to be a full year. album, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a full album. It's nine tracks. There's six full songs. And then if you've listened to our album, you'll know because we do the industrial thing, there's always a bit of noise and interesting stuff in between mm. that drives. I mean, there's messages and shit going on. So uh, it'd be nine songs in total. Our hardcover albums always have a cover sort of hidden in there. We don't do the digital releases with covers, but we do the hard releases with covers. Um, mm. So yeah, 10 songs on the hard copy in total. Yes. Awesome, man. Shit, I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to the next single and, and the single after that or whatever it's going to be. And the collab. Yeah, Tours and gigs. Um, obviously, uh, with the COVID and all that sort of shit, we, we have no idea when uh, that's all going to kick off again. Have you guys decided to join the, the electronic online visual revolution and um, do some live shit like that? Well, it's kind of hard because um, you're out in a different province. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a streaming uh, avenue for to, to have a have a show um, you know we are actually in negotiations with with someone presently um, okay. in, in terms of trying to get a, a, a streaming gig going you know um, just to see if that uh, you know just to keep the sort of the juices going you know people we're still around you know even though our singles are coming out we'd also like to coincide and possibly have have some sort of streaming avenue going but the, the 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 nice thing about the way we do things is that the singles that we put out always have a video attached to them uh, and um so i think that you know they, they're not going to be shy of actually seeing you know the visual side of things but i'd, I'd love to play I need to play again. <laughs> mm. Tours, tours. Uh, if say if the album comes out sure. later in the year or in the beginning of the year, um, are there going to be any tours planned for around the country? Well, we were planning it for this year. Uh, we actually okay. wanted to do our album release because Alec is from there. We've never played there. I lived there for a while. We fucking loved Cape Town, so we actually wanted to do our formal album launch there this time around. And um, you know, COVID happened, so definitely we'll try. I think what's cool, just back to the streaming thing, people that have followed us for a long time will tell you we've played gigs without a drummer because we've had we've had more drummers than any other band members. So all our music is digital and available. So we've actually so we, we are actually, you know, we've been batting around options. So maybe one day we'll stream something without a drummer just to, you know, just to play. So we practice a lot with digital drums as well for the three of us just to keep us fresh. Right. 
and uh, yeah, so anything is possible. But tours, tours, we would love to do that. You know, right? And and so uh, anybody uh, who would like to throw some money at a tour for us, you know, please get in touch. <laughs> there you go. I think I think you should speak to to Mike Pocock and and um, what's the what's the dude from Flat Stanley? Uh, yeah. I uh, forget his name now. Andy Mack. There you go. Andy Mack. Yeah. Come on. Get Andy Mack involved. There you go. <laughs> look, I look, yeah, I think it's a difficult time for everybody, obviously, with COVID and mm. lockdown. And God knows uh, there's been so many venues that have closed its doors. And yeah, uh, tragic, but it is what it is. And mm. I guess you just got to get a move on and adapt and shit like that. Right. So we, we are fast approaching the end of our conversation now. What is the funniest shit that has happened on stage? Alec first. Go on. Sure. What's the funniest? Uh, in this band or in any other band? It's <laughs> whatever. What's the funniest shit that's happened with Chaos Doctrine? Um, on stage. Jeez. On stage, yeah. Uh, I think we, 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 um, Alec, I'll nah, remind I don't think of anything off the top of my head. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> Alec, in the free state, Alec's monitor was so loud that he couldn't hear himself. And there was so much smoke right where he was standing that he was choking in that. So he was kind of like almost dehydrating on stage because he couldn't, he had no water or anything with him on stage, but he, he still soldiered through. We like a seven and a half that night. That happened to Alec. What's happened to us twice. We've got a laptop on stage which drives our loops and our visuals. And the fucking thing would, you know, when your screen lock goes on. So the screen lock goes on. So the video's cut out nothing is playing properly he has to go sneak behind unlock the screen with two fingers in the dark type in a password you know and these kind of shit gotta do without anyone it looks kind of douchey you know so yeah. that's the funniest shit um here's one more here's one more we played two shows in a row the first show i complained and said i couldn't hear myself at all the second show, I was so fucking loud that I couldn't hear anything, including the drums, which was like a meter <laughs> behind me. So never complain too loud because, you, you know, you might get what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, favorite drinks? Do you guys drink while playing or is it strictly afterwards? No, no, it's like during a gig, a beer, a couple of beers during you, while you're playing. I, I don't mind that. Yeah. Okay. The rest of the time we drink whiskey. Me and Alec, it's like a, it's like yeah, a thing. Bourbon. We're doing. What, yeah, bourbon. Yeah, we're what? huge bourbon. Bourbon, okay. Bourbon or whiskey? Yeah. American. American, American, American whiskey, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, uh, Maker's Mark, that sort of stuff. Yes. Anything. Slate. Okay, cool. Maybe we should get a sponsorship from Jack Daniels. I'll come, we can make that happen, surely. She's, you know, in South Africa. It's money to pop me. <laughs> Um, I think we need to get Devo to crack I've that actually, whipper. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I approached, I approached so Daniel, you're saying, yeah? Houses, and I was, I approached one of the big houses, and they, and I said, hey, this is what we're doing. Would you be interested? And they're like, yeah, you know, we don't really see our brand associated with that style of music. It wasn't Jack Daniels. Um, you'll see the bourbons in South Africa are being in by houses. So in America, there's a shitload of different bourbons. Most of them are owned, like three or four uh, labels will be owned by the same company you know so that like i went to company x and i was like this is what we're doing and they're like yeah but you know so fuck, dude everything in south africa is about money and i guess in the western world's about money and pop music so there you go <laughs> but we'll still that, drink it, you know probably. you should really fuck over your fans and release a pop song and for the yeah. last 30 seconds just massive thrash sound yeah, we can write that in 10 seconds, you know, so uh, maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> Almost started singing a Justin Bieber song. Thank fuck I didn't. My heart would have exploded in my fucking brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alec and, and Daniel, thank you so much for taking the time out to chat. And um, you guys are fucking hilarious. Dr. D, you're, you're a fucking nut job. But I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to seeing you guys live down Cape Town to promote uh, the release of the album. Uh, next single is Father Gregory coming out the 17th of July. That'll be available on all DSPs. Links in the description below. And um, yeah, thank you once again, guys. Uh, Alec and Daniel. Um, awesome to chat to you. And I'm so glad we finally got this fucking podcast done. <laughs> awesome, dude. Nice one, Trev. Alrighty, dude. Thank you. Alrighty, man. Have a good Thanks one. Be us. safe. Yeah, you, you too. Brother. Take it easy. <laughs>